Here are a few small mistakes that whenever I see these in design, I know that the designer who's worked on these is maybe more junior or maybe hasn't come across these things before. So if you're really looking to take your design work to the next level, then I would make sure that you look out for these and correct these whenever you spot them. So the first one is using typographer quotes. So that's quote marks, whether single quote marks or double quote marks. You want to make sure that they're these curly variants instead of these straight variants. And the way to do that on a Mac is a combination of option, shift, and the square brackets. This is something that anyone who's worked with me before knows that I get obsessive about this. Whenever I see this in copy, I'll make sure to submit a pull request or try and get someone to change it. I think it's such a small but important detail for designers to get right. The second thing is to do with transition timing. So when you're transitioning between two states, there's a way of getting there, and this is often called easing. And the default, instead of just having linear easing, is to go to like an ease in, ease out, where it has this kind of nice curve, so it speeds up and then it slows down. But you can go a bit more detailed than this. So you can see this on this hover state of a logo of an old website of mine, and on all of the links on that website. It was a very quick movement in to signify that your mouse has kind of reached something, and then a slow movement out. So there's so much more you can do than just the default easing settings. I really recommend taking a look at these. The third thing, and this is also related to hover states, is to only have hover states on devices that support hover. So I've got an example of this on a website I was designing recently for a friend where we had a lovely hover state on feature columns to show that your mouse had moved over it. But then when you interacted with this website on a phone, when you tap to scroll, the hover state would get left on because there's no real concept of hovering on a mobile phone. So I'd work with your front-end engineers. Ideally, this is something that you could ship all in one go. I think there's a media query for which devices support hover. So making sure to only target devices that support hover. This next mistake is again, something that I see cleaned up all the time in print and publishing. And that's because when you're designing for a physical media, you know that there's only gonna be one screen size. You don't have to worry about responsive design. And that is the concept of widows and orphans when typesetting. So a widow is when you've got a single line of copy by itself. So say I've got a book and then I go to a new chapter marker. What I don't want to happen is to have this line over here just be like a single line at the top of the page because it doesn't look right. Another thing to avoid is something called orphans. So if you see this word over here, right at the bottom of this paragraph, you can see it's kind of been left on its own there. And a nice way to fix that is to make sure that the word above it just wraps around. Now, I'm sure you might be thinking to yourself that, hey, this is really hard to do with digital design. How do you make website copy respond like that when you have to support an infinite number of screen sizes? And I'm here to let you know that CSS now has a property for this. It's called TextWrap Pretty, which will automatically get rid of any orphans at the bottoms of lines. And there's also TextWrap Balance, which can be really good for when you've got center aligned, like subheading text. Text right balance just makes all of your line lengths look roughly equal. All right, the fifth mistake, and this is so common, people do this all the time, and whenever I see this, I think maybe I should write to the person who owns this website and say, hey, here's a hack to fix this. The problem is when you see a mobile input on a device and you click onto it, and then your whole browser just zooms in a little bit. I hate seeing this, and what it is, is it's your browser automatically adjusting it if your input size is less than 16 pixels. Obviously, you might want an input size less than 16 pixels. The way to get around this is by using a CSS scale property. Now, if you didn't understand what I just said, don't worry about it. Just show this video to your front end developer. But what's important to say is that you as a UX designer, it's, it's your role to own this level of detail, this level of fidelity, making sure all these interactions are perfect. So even if you don't know about the implementation or you don't need to worry about it, it's important that you are the one to raise these things and make sure that they get solved. Okay, so the last mistake is using JPEGs when you should be using PNGs, or vice versa, using PNGs when you should be using JPEGs. Now, JPEGs will give you a much, much smaller file size if most of your image has loads of colors, so for example, as a photograph, whereas a PNG will compress way more if you have very few colors, so for example, like a screenshot. Now, I think you should run everything through tinypng.com. That also supports JPEGs, ignore the domain name, 
but that is the best tool I've used for compressing images. And you might be wondering why this is a UX tip or a design tip. Isn't this a front end thing or it's all about optimization? Well, actually the reason I've included this is because I really think that speed is a UX issue. If a website doesn't load very fast, it just results in a worse experience for your user. Okay, those were six mistakes that I absolutely hate seeing. And now that I've shared them with you, you're gonna hate seeing them everywhere when you spot them too. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button down below and please do hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on any more videos going forward. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one.